Welcome once again to our Lenten Reflections. This is part two, where I will reflect on the readings for the second Sunday of Lent here in this beautiful parish church of Arda, County Limerick, Ireland. My name is Father John Mochler, a priest here in Limerick Diocese. And today, of course, is St. Patrick's Day, the saint who is our national patron, who we thank for bringing us the faith that has made us brothers and sisters of Jesus. We thank God for sending him to us. We will reflect more on St. Patrick later on in our reflection. Today, for the starting point, I would like to begin with the opening prayer of the Mass for the second Sunday of Lent, where it's, we pray, O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Now, this is a command that God has asked of us. And if you joined us last Sunday, you will recall that I spoke on the importance of joining Jesus in the desert for the 40 days, which in practical terms meant seeking silence and solitude because here is where we hear the gentle voice of Jesus. He never shouts, and that is why to hear him, to hear his voice, what is required, first of all, is that we meditate on his word. But then we take time in silence. After reading the word, constantly meditating on it, developing the practice of silence. The greatest place to do this, seek the solitude, joining Jesus in the silence of the desert, is adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. What I want to do right now, first of all, is emphasize the importance of silence because when we develop this practice, we nourish ourselves, and I should say, Jesus nourishes us. We are nourished by the word of God, but it is in the silence that we hear him speaking to us. That doesn't mean just going into a room turning off everything and having no noise. Certainly that's necessary. We can refer to it as establishing the environment, having the environment right to develop the silence. But what you will find, and everybody, we all find this, when we sit in the silence and close our eyes and try and think of God or speak to him. We will be distracted by the thoughts of the day. Maybe the imagination kicks in, the fantasy, and it's one thing after another. So it takes practice. It can be done. Jesus asks for it because the benefits are immense. Now, Seeking the silence is in opposition to what the world offers. And this is why Jesus went out into the desert. Remember, I said last week, life is a spiritual battle. And when Jesus went out into the desert, he showed clearly the battle between God and the rebel. This is manifested in the world as the dictatorship between noise versus silence. <clears throat> noise versus silence. So solitude and silence are guests of the soul. It is where and the way we welcome Jesus as the sweet guest of our soul. The more he makes his home in us, the more he establishes his silence within us. 
we can define it as a thought or a word spoken to God from the depths of our soul with all the love that we are capable of. But in that thought, in that word spoken, there is concentrated all our desire for holiness, all that we wish to express to God, all the love we want to give him, all the love we wish to receive. And when we do this, God responds. He makes his home within us. He pours his grace into us. And this brings us to the second point I want to highlight, again from the opening prayer. Nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. I underline and stress here the importance of purity. Uh, it's very important because in the spiritual life following Christ, purity is the foundation of everything. Whatever good we do, the meritorious value that it will have is based on the purity of the offering that it is made with. So where there is purity, making the sacrifice, making the offering, there is God's fragrance of holiness. It has a perfume pleasing and acceptable to God. Looking at the second reading uh, that we've, we have in the Mass today, again, it's highlighting the importance of purity. We are called to do what God, speaking through St. Paul in the letter to the Philippians, asks of us. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. So purity begins with the mind because whatever actions we carry out, the thought comes first. We put into action what we have in our mind. If the mind is pure, our actions will be pure. That is why the church gives us these 40 days to concentrate on the purity of our lives, develop the, this great virtue, because then from, from our lives will rise to God an offering that is very pleasing and acceptable to him. In this, straight away, you will see that we stand in opposition to the world because looking around us, we see an explosion of impurity highlighting how capable the enemy is through his temptations, infiltrating people's minds. Because when the mind is corrupt, society will become corrupt because what people do in the body is corrupt. In a few minutes, when I come to speak on the transfiguration of Jesus, we will immediately make the connection to this opening prayer and to the second reading where Paul is giving out to the Philippians who have made themselves enemies of Christ because, as he said, they are proud of what they should be ashamed of. Uh, who wants us to keep the look of shame? Who wants to free us from it? The Gospel makes this very clear. We take a break now. At the end of the break, I will continue to speak on the magnificence of the transfiguration of Jesus, which is something in store for all of us.
Welcome back again to part two. I'm Father John Mawkler, coming to you from the very nice parish church of Arda, County Limerick, Ireland. And we are reflecting on the readings for today, the second Sunday of Lent, which is the celebration, by the way, of our great patron, St. Patrick, who is celebrated not only in Ireland, but by the Irish all over the world. Uh, I would like to focus now specifically on the transfiguration of Jesus. He went up the mountain, taking with him Peter, James, and John. And as the Gospel tells us, he was transfigured. The radiant glory of God manifested from his body, his face, his clothes, everything became radiant, it says. Brighter, as bright and as pure as the dribbling snow. What is this? What is happening here? Jesus is manifesting not just to the three apostles. They were just witnesses of what was happening. Jesus was manifesting for the whole world to know the beauty of the human soul that is filled with the grace of God. And here is our infinite dignity that God gives us. And this is why during the 40 days of Lent, we are called to make our best effort to nourish this gift of divine life within us so that it grows and our inspiration, <clears throat> the greatest inspiration that we can have, is from today's Gospel, when Jesus manifests that beauty, that power, that glory, which comes from his soul and envelops his body. I would like to uh, quote Saint Anselm, who, referring to the great dignity that we have, is also a great inspiration for us with the words that he gives us. I cannot express how happy the elect will be. Certainly, they will rejoice according to the measure of their love, and they will love according to the knowledge that they will have. This is why we should always pray that we come to know God more and more, asking him to let us come to know him so that we will love him and rejoice in him. And even if we cannot do this perfectly in this life, that we may at least progress day by day until we arrive at this perfection. So Lord, let our knowledge of you progress here and now and become more perfect there. Let my love increase here and now, day by day, and become more perfect there, so that my joy may be in the perfect possession of you there. And he continues, Recognize the splendor which you receive from grace. Remain true in life to the high position which your soul already occupies by grace. What have you in common with the world, which is so far beneath your feet? You who by the dignity of your new condition have been transferred into heaven and have there erected your throne. So why still wallow in the mire of the earth? Now, if we think back on some of the precious words that God has spoken through this saint, because they are words of the Holy Spirit. First, he says, the rejoicing that we will have in heaven is so great that it cannot be described. I cannot express how happy the elect will be. The elect are those who enter heaven as saints. But he says, Something most important, this is why we should always pray 
to come to know God more and more. And he gives the reason why. Nobody loves a stranger. We have to grow in our knowledge of God so that we come to love him more and more. Nobody is more worthy of love. Therefore, nobody is more worthy of knowing more and more about him. And the more we grow in our knowledge, the more we will want to love him. We won't ever do it perfectly here, but we will do it perfectly there. And he finishes, recognize the splendor which you receive from grace. This is what Jesus is manifesting, the beauty of the heavenly grace coming from his soul. So with, when we have this divine presence of God, as St. Anselm says, our throne is already in heaven waiting for us. Now I'd like to bring in St. Patrick here again. We have our faith in this divine life because St. Patrick brought it to us. And everybody will celebrate today, St. Patrick's Day. But they say, you hear so many saying, we are celebrating being Irish. I don't agree with that. We are celebrating being the Irish that the faith was brought to by St. Patrick. So we are celebrating being Irish people of the faith because this is the secret to arriving at that heavenly glory, living the faith, preserving within us what Jesus manifested in that transfiguration. Now, we don't have it in fullness like he has. But the point is, we participate in it. We do have a share in it as long as we live in the state of grace, living the, what we call living the Ten Commandments. It cost St. Patrick a great price to bring it to us, so we should not sacrifice this for a pagan way of celebrating the festival, drinking green beer and going on floats and so on that have no connection whatsoever with the life of the Blessed Trinity, which St. Patrick brought us. Here I have co a quotation from the writing, different quotations from the writings of St. Patrick which we should take as inspiration and encouragement to make our best effort during these 40 days to participate more and more in that divine life of God which always puts us in a new relationship with God, obviously one that is most pleasing to him and is of immense benefit to us. St. Patrick, today... I can offer him sacrifice with confidence, giving myself as a living victim to Christ my Lord, who kept me safe through all my trials. Now he has said there, he became a victim. In other words, he sacrificed his life, not just for God, but for us. Uh, giving myself as a living victim the same as Jesus offered himself to the Father. So St. Patrick was sharing in this and offered himself as a victim to bring us this gift. So with this, I say to everybody listening in all over the world who is proud to be Irish and wants to be Irish, don't let the neo-paganism of the world today steal this treasure from you. Second point from St. Patrick. God showed me how to have faith in him forever as one who is never to be doubted. Nobody will ever be as reliable as Jesus. The promises he has made, he will fulfill. And his promise to us for participating in the divine life will be the fullness of our own transfiguration. We will radiate in heaven with that glory of God through the beauty of divine grace that fills our soul, that makes us radiant. Again, St. Patrick, how did so great and salutary a gift come to me? 
the gift of knowing and loving God, though at the cost of homeland and family. Here again, St. Patrick had to sacrifice everything to bring us this gift, which is the greatest gift. But notice he said, salutary, a salutary gift. It brings healing, healing of body and soul, healing of mind, spirit. Only God is the real healer and through living and participating in God's grace, heavenly glory, whatever healing God wants for us will come to us from him. Now he uses the sacraments, prayer, blessings, different um, sacramentals, his channels, but he uh, grants us his healing. I came to the Irish people to preach the gospel and endure the taunts of unbelievers, putting up with reproaches about my earthly pilgrimage, suffering many persecutions, even bondage. So we are to treasure this great gift, being not just Irish, again, but Irish of the Catholic faith, brought to us by our national patron, St. Patrick. And I finish. He continues, if I am worthy, I am ready also to give up my life without hesitation and most willingly for his name. I want to spend myself in that country, Ireland, even in debt. And here is where he died. He gave his life for us. So we ask ourselves, if he's prepared to die so that we have this, are we prepared to join Jesus in the desert for 40 days? Not looking at magazines, newspapers, so much contaminating, cor corrupting material that destroys souls. Read the lives of the saints. Read St. Patrick. Uh, meditate on the Word of God. Pray the Rosary. Uh, do adoration. Stations of the Cross on Friday. If there's vigils or mini vigils, take part in those. Uh, prepare well for confession, worldly Holy Communion, good preparation for Mass, good thanksgiving afterwards. This is joining Jesus in the desert. In the end, that heavenly glory increases in us. It gives us a value that is as infinite as the precious body and blood of Jesus. Because remember, that's who we welcome into us. That is what we have in our soul. So, Thank you for listening, and next week my very good friend Father Eamon McCarthy from the Diocese of Cline will speak to you on the readings for the third and fourth Sundays of Lent. And I bless you and ask God to sustain you in your efforts, making the most of these 40 days, that he preserve your health, keep you safe, increase his grace within you, and that you experience the true joy and peace that comes from holy living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>